people who've never been to space are set to travel farther up than any human has gone in 50 years. The tech billionaire Jared, Jared Isaacman is now leading the mission. He's teaming up with Elon Musk's company SpaceX to make it happen. If all goes to plan, Isaacman and the crew will travel to an orbit no human has reached since the Apollo astronauts went to the moon. But they'll need some training first. CNBC's Morgan Brennan caught up got, and got an invite to Isaacman's private hangar in Bozeman, Montana, where the crew is now preparing for the mission, Top Gun style. Please come and right. We're doing a very quick tail chase. 39-year-old billionaire Jared Isaacman, call sign Rook, is preparing to go to space again. It's a little sense of G's. We'll make it quick. He's flying a Russian fighter jet that goes faster than the speed of sound to experience G-forces that will be similar to what an astronaut feels when a rocket launches into space. It's an extremely rare aircraft to be flying in the U.S., and he purchased it from Microsoft co-founder Paul Allen's estate. So this is the MiG-29. This is the Russian equivalent to like an F-16. So it can go twice the speed of sound. It can pull nine Gs. I mean, if you're trying to create like a high stress dynamic environment here on Earth without having to go to space, this is a great way to do it. These Gs hurt more, which is great. So if you can handle this, then you can probably handle going to space. This Soviet era MiG-29, part of Isaacman's personal fleet and the other fighter jets on site will conduct hundreds of exercises over the course of three days, but still, it's just one part of a regimen that includes scuba diving, mountain climbing, and lots of academic study. The Polaris Dawn crew will spend five days in a SpaceX capsule, attempting the highest Earth orbit ever flown. They will conduct the first commercial spacewalk and travel through portions of the Van Allen radiation belt to research the effects of space radiation on human health. Isaacman will command the mission, which will also include two SpaceX engineers. But this weekend, we will have the opportunity to experience some G-forces, fly in some jets. We're working on team coordination, communication, kind of working in a fast-paced environment. So would it be fair to say that through the Polaris program, you're essentially also starting to build out with SpaceX a private astronaut corps? I, I think we're, what we're doing is continuing uh, where we began with Inspiration4 to kind of expand uh, access to space to everyone and have lots of commercial astronauts. Access and training that requires the need for speed. The avionics, believe it or not, in an uh, aircraft like this is not totally dissimilar to what you've got in a, in a Dragon spacecraft. So the same way we maintain situational awareness, especially in bad weather like this, relying on our instruments, is very similar to how we maintain situational awareness in, in orbit as well. It's a cool way to uh, put some Gs on the body, get familiarity with that. Claire's Dawn is the first of three missions that will culminate in a manned flight of SpaceX's new mega rocket, Starship. For Isaacman, space travel is more than just a passion or an expensive hobby. He wants to be at the forefront of what he sees as the next huge economic opportunity for humankind beyond our planet. When we can bring down uh, the cost to access orbit to such an extent as Starship is, is endeavoring to do, you don't even know potentially the possibilities. Are we going to have space hotels? I don't know. Maybe at some point in time, but we're going to be able to put a lot more stuff up there. There's a lot of space. We're going to learn a lot, and there will certainly be an economy to follow. Isaacman calls this a partnership with SpaceX. The price? Undisclosed. But if previous spaceflight estimates are any gauge, it could cost hundreds of millions of dollars. And like last year's Inspiration4 mission, Polaris Dawn will also raise money for St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. Shep? Morgan Brennan, thanks very much.